This Friday, on March 10th, 2017, ROH will hold its 15th anniversary show on pay-per-view from Sam's Town, Las Vegas, Nevada. There's been a lot of talk about this show after the events of this year's Manhattan Mayhem, where we saw the Broken Hardys debut and defeat the Young Bucks for the ROH Tag Team titles, and we also saw an appearance from Bully Ray, where it was later shown that he would appear on the 15th anniversary card. With all of that being said, there has not been much fanfare to the ROH 15th anniversary show, and there's been little to no hype or buzz about it until about Manhattan Mayhem. Uh, people have not discussed it, it has not been a hot topic of conversation. It was basically treated as a speed bump on the road to WrestleMania, or Supercard of Honor on WrestleMania weekend. In this video, I want to take a look at why ROH's 15th anniversary show has been largely a dud in terms of building up and hype to this point, why there's been such a lack of a card, and what this could mean for the future of Ring of Honor Wrestling. On October 31st, 2016, I received an email from Ring of Honor's website that said 15th anniversary tickets would go on sale on November 4th, 2016 at 10 a.m. I hadn't considered making this video at the time, so I haven't thoroughly or analytically tracked ticket sales. However, I have kept track of ticket sales loosely because I myself don't have a ticket to the show yet. In the first month, as most Ring of Honor shows do, in Las Vegas at least, uh, most of the first and second row tickets were sold, a large amount of the uh, surrounding floor seats were sold as well. Uh, by the second month, the ticket sales had largely peaked, and were going to slowly trickle down from that point and sell off. Most of the good seats had been taken, essentially, and a lot of the kind of bleacher seats uh, were still available. As of this recording on March 7th, 2017, the ticket sales for the pay-per-view event have done fairly well, but have not come close to selling out the building, and I feel this is for a good reason. The ROH television episodes have built towards basically one match, Christopher Daniels versus Adam Cole for the ROH World Heavyweight Championship. Both sides have very high stakes in this match, as Adam Cole is defending his Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship, and Christopher Daniels may never see another title shot in his career. So, it has been built up very well, and it is a very good World Heavyweight title match, but the rest of the card has seemingly been neglected. Looking this over in post, I have thought about it, and Marty Skrull and Leo Rush for the television championship has had a decent amount of build to it. I, I suppose I didn't give enough credit to it originally, so I do want to give ROH credit in that regard. In the early weeks leading up to the pay-per-view, only three matches were announced. Christopher Daniels vs. Adam Cole for the ROH World Championship, Marty Skrull defending his ROH TV Championship against Leo Rush, and the last match was Jay Lethal taking on the loser of the Manhattan Mayhem title match between Bobby Fish and Adam Cole. Several months would go by before a fourth match would be added to the card in Rapongi Vice versus the Young Bucks for the ROH Tag Team titles in a Las Vegas street fight, which in terms of TV buildup had little to none. Now, this all would change after Ring of Honor's Manhattan Mayhem show. After defending the ROH World Tag Team Championships against Jay White and Leo Rush, the Young Bucks would be surprised in a return of the Broken Hardys, this time to Ring of Honor Wrestling. The Broken Hardys would then go on to defeat the Young Bucks for the ROH World Tag Team Championships at the Manhattan Mayhem show. In a post-match promo, Matt Hardy talked about leaving TNA and being contracted with Ring of Honor for at least the near future, through the Supercard of Honor date they originally set. This brings us back to the 15th anniversary show. The Broken Hardys have been added to the Las Vegas Street Fight, so now it's a three-way tag team match between Rapongi Vice, the Young Bucks, and the defending tag team champions in the Broken Hardys. From this point, the ROH 15th anniversary card had about five matches announced with a little less than a week to go. Uh, sometime before the Manhattan Mayhem show, the ROH six-man titles had a match set for the Kingdom versus Dalton Castle and the Boys. With mere days away from the pay-per-view, we've had one more match added uh, as of this recording, March 7th, 2017. Uh, the Briscoes with Bully Ray in a very strange team against another strange team in War Machine and Davey Boy Smith Jr. With one angle shot with Bully Ray saving the Briscoes from a Bullet Club beatdown, uh, there has been little to absolutely no build-up in this seemingly thrown-together match. Now, that is not to say that every pay-per-view needs to have every match with heavy storyline build-up. However, it goes to show that Ring of Honor had not had much planned for this pay-per-view until about a month away from the show. I find it a little strange that the anniversary show, one of the biggest pay-per-views in ROH's past two calendar years, has been treated as such an afterthought in the build to the Supercard of Honor weekend. The show was basically saved at the last minute with the additions of the Broken Hardys and Bully Ray. 
and I think it really shows three things. One, how little they had planned for this show. Two, what little homegrown talent they have left that has not yet gone to another company. And three, their inability to make meaningful feuds and matches with the talent they do have. Were most of the 15th anniversary tickets sold on the anniversary name alone? Yes. Were most of the 15th anniversary tickets sold before the Hardys and Bully Ray were added to the card? Yes. Are people excited for Christopher Daniels and Adam Cole? I, for one, am, and I assume most people are. But the fact that this card was hardly filled up two weeks before the show is kind of shocking and worries me, quite frankly, about the future of Ring of Honor. Will they be able to draw in the future with their homegrown talent and without relying on bringing in older, more popular guys? Will the lack of New Japan wrestlers damage their drawing ability in many towns? In 2017, it's not looking good for ROH. Whatever's happening behind the scenes in Ring of Honor is causing a lot of young, talented workers to leave, and this haphazardly thrown together card doesn't inspire much confidence in their ability to keep a packed house in the long term. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is my first kind of analysis video, so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the current state of Ring of Honor in the comments section below, and leave a like for more content like this in the future.